Hey, welcome back to the channel, man. I told y'all, I told y'all, make sure you subscribe to the channel right now, man. I got all the receipts, proof of everything that's going on, man. Hey, look, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Let's get into it, man. So look, man, we got the more and more text messages because just keep coming out, man. A lot of stuff was already out there that a lot of you people missed, man, including these messages, man. You could see how clearly if we break it down, um... Raven went, you know, Jamaica thinks she's scared hiding something. She does not want to go down for this. She knew that in the beginning when she basically signed herself away into saying that she was going to be down for this movement. She thought she was going to get a little bit of bread, be able to get fly, you know, have be dripped out all the wrong things she was thinking about. But she forgot about the repercussions, the consequences behind her actions, that what goes around comes around, her karma. She forgot about the karma and basically, that's how they ended up into the situation where the conversations ended up getting relief because the people that she was talking to was there to expose her from the jump. You got to realize that whenever they knew that uh, that Jamaica Thick was going to be the one that was going to have all the fingers pointed to. So what they did was try to get her to admit to it. That way, if blame came on the person she was talking to, they would just throw him under the bus. And that's exactly what happened. Because word on the street, the feds came and picked up the person that Jamaica Thick was talking to. And he turned over everything to them. And when he turned over everything to them, they wanted to know exactly what happened inside that cookie shop. And why is it, you know, tell us anything that clears the cookie shop and anything that you know about the cookie shop. Well, he told them there's nothing to clear about the cookie shop because then people really be doing them dirty things in there. Just like how that landlord old lady said. And that's why she was already trying to sell the whole place for 800K, man. Y'all have to look at these facts. Look at these receipts right here, man. The proof is in the pudding. Jamaica Thick says she doesn't want to be in jail for the rest of her life. Well, that's because she involved herself into something into where it's incriminating enough to where she could get caught up on a RICO, if not something that's going to guarantee her a 25 to life, basically. But this is the message. Look, they should have never did this. They should have never tried to backdoor Dolph and set him up. Whatever she talked with Big Moochie Great to, whatever she set up with that whole turkey drive stuff, that stuff, man, is all going to come to light. It's all coming to light now. You see how they were actually trying to pr trick you guys and, and put a third or fourth turkey drive in saying that Dolph would have came to Makita's after. In between the turkey drive, like he had wanted to go get their nasty, stale cookies. Anybody that's ever ate Makita's cookies and actually went there and went to see what it was all about have realized that they butter you up. They butter you up with their sweet talking, their southern hospitality, all to get you to take out your wallet and pay up, pay up them $40 batches of cookies, man. But they're making more money than burner with their cookies. So look, they butter people up, get them to pay, cut the check and whatever. Boom, it's done. They did the same thing to the mayor. They did the same thing to the news where they ran all the campaigns about donating them money because they were so in need. Well, look, they were never in need. Nobody needed their cookies. No one needed them to be around to basically get to the point where they're setting up and backdooring Dolph. Like y'all have to look at the fact that these people were super, super thirsty from the jump, not even the, the, a year before the Dolph, two years before the Dolph, when they first came on news for their 20th anniversary and stuff. You telling me, y'all been open for 20 years and you ain't got enough money or you still asking for donations and stuff. Close the shop, retire, man. Y'all got your bread. Y'all got all them loans. They took the GoFundMe. The GoFundMe alone paid them Four five hundred thousand dollars, man, all in one lump sum payment. Now, here goes the the more the more the the truth is coming out about the fact that she's in this conversation talking about to a person who says he's gonna be down there. They're gonna be down there in two weeks. Who's coming there in two weeks to come in and what suppress more evidence? Give her more lies to tell because in them two weeks is when she started telling all these lies about, oh, was the dad there? Was it not there? Was he just pulling up? 
who hit the button. And you got to remember, she said the cashier seen the cashier seen the two shooters running up and everything like that. So they're going to use the cashier to make the narrative keep going, man. And that's not the only thing, but you have to look deeper, deeper into the fact that this could only have happened if they had had the conversations with Big Moochie Grape and Key Glock. Now, it's alleged because a lot of people, they don't want to believe that PRE had anything to do with it. But you can't have a back door without having people from your side back door you. It's just hard. It's just going to be hard pill to swallow, man. If Dolph got back doored, then he can only get back doored by his own people and his own people and his camp. Yo, you got to look key. You seen the interview with Key Glock where he was giving him a stanky eye, had an attitude the whole time, looked very ungrateful and looked like he would have been willing to take Dolph out of his top position in order to just get what he wanted, even if it even if it meant just a a couple more dollars for Key Glock, a little bit more fame. You see how his yellow tape blew up after that, went trending on TikTok and everything. You think this is just a coincidence? You think Big Moochie Grape just randomly wanted to do that uh, B.I.G. video and wanted to try to get his new album popping after the whole Dolph situation, after everything clouded them up and their news was in the headlines for months and months and months, man. And the fact that Key Glock had that jewelry on is really what put him in the talks of everything. Because if Key Glock would have never touched that jewelry, if if they if he would have told him no when they brought when Maurice and them brought him Dolph's jewelry, he should have just said no. Put give that back to the kids, man. Put that in a museum somewhere. But the fact that he accepted the jewelry and wore it means that. His hands is just as dirty. His blood on his hands just like there is on the Cookie Monsters. And from that alone, it discredits him, man. It really does discredit him. And the fact that Big Moochie Grape is really trying to take credit for the entire paper route name. Dude's got to be the dumbest person I ever heard of. How can you clearly, how can you try to take some somebody's idea when it's clearly been established for years before you even popped up around the hood? Because you got to remember, when Dolph started this whole paper route, Big Moochie Grape was a middle schooler. Big Moochie Grape was in eighth grade when Dolph started PRE. Go look at the facts, man. Big Moochie Grape knew nothing about how to rap, knew nothing about the streets. Dude was a schoolboy. He went to school. He went to the private school, wore the khaki pants and everything, man. Y'all have to look at the facts. He was standing on the, he was standing waiting at the bus stop. Dudes could have got him at any time. He's not in, He's not from the streets at all. Matter of fact, when his whole family came here from Haiti, they wanted him to be a schoolboy, get his education, and maybe going into a show choir or dancing. But once they, Big Moochie Grape, when he graduated eighth grade, he started going into show choir. He went to show choir because, you know, he thought that it would have been cool to be able to be a part of the marching band and this is and that because look a lot of people from that area in the south they be joining the marching band they be doing show choir they be doing all these you know things right and so that's where big moochie grape started his journey he was hanging with the marching band kids and one day they played the dolph beat on the marching band and he tried to sing a hook in the show choir but they roasted him they roasted him hard, so hard, so bad that he went home crying, had, had one of his uh, people on his block call the school and make it seem like he had a doctor appointment that he needed to go leave early for, like a dentist appointment or something. And then he went home crying because he tried to sing a hook to a, 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 a beat the marching band played. And everybody roasted him because he just looked super goofy doing it, man. Fast forward... He took revenge in that and wanted to start his rap career to basically show everybody that he's not just a show choir kid, schoolboy, that he could really be in the marching band if he tried to rap. And he wanted to be as cool as all that. Man, everything was for fame and the clout, guys. Do not believe the hype, man. Big Moochie Grape was just doing this all for fame and clout. He was nowhere to be found when this all started in the beginning anyways. 
These guys are just recruits. These guys are just players that are signed, and they can be busts, just like in the league, man. Hey, man, look, subscribe to the channel. Like this video if you're new to the channel. Smash that subscribe button. Stay tuned because I'm going to have breaking news coming out in the next video. So I'll see y'all then.